What's up everybody, welcome to Political Fight Club, I'm Robert Durden. And in this episode we're going to be doing our power rankings. It's been a while, and I'm uh, sorry I missed you guys the last couple of days just doing family stuff, I haven't been home. But I've got two or three episodes for today, possibly three if I can find the time to film them, but they are all written. We've got this power rankings episode, we've got another episode which is my part two of three of the roast of the shit libs. Which, by the way, shit libs, that was only going to be two parts long, but a couple of you assholes had to come after me, so I had to write a separate part for all of you heckling sons of bitches. So now it's going to be three parts, and uh, I've got a couple of people that you'll recognize in there. They, they have to be put down, unfortunately. You know, don't come after me like that. Anyway, third part is going to be probably the book club. I've got that chapter uh, read and the episode kind of planned out. It's nothing too difficult. We're just going to read chapter four. And, uh, you know, we may even do another chapter today because I don't have really much to do, and I missed you guys. So, let's start with the power rankings. The new motif for this power rankings is just going to be my all-star squad as it stands right now. So, I've uh, done one of these before, way back in the day, where it's just a pure power rankings episode. This does take into effect or into account some of the recent hot streaks, recent cold streaks, stuff like that. But mostly it's like, if you consider like it analogous to like a basketball team, it's my starting five and then like the sixth man, uh, which will be my notable mention here. So I'm going to name to you six channels that are doing excellent work and in what order. And these are people that I've been basically absorbing almost everything they put out. And almost all of these channels have been on a hot streak lately. So let's start off with the uh, notable mention. The previously known as Fred Hampton Leftist Revolutionary Blackout Network. Uh, they are doing great work, and they've taken some shit lately, and they are they haven't put out quite as much content over the holidays, similar to me, but I think that basically they're just taking shit left and right, so they're all taking some time with their families, same as me, so they're back up now, and the numbers look fantastic, and don't get it twisted, you guys. The reason that people have been getting on them is because the general strike summit was such a monumental success that the shit libs couldn't ignore it. It was wonderful. And it's going to be something that they do regularly. It was wonderful to take in all of that great information with all those wonderful guests and make no mistake. The neo libs see that as a threat because it is. So Revolutionary Blackout Network is in this uh, allegory or this metaphor is the sixth man, but they're kind of like the sixth man who's like the number one overall draft pick who you bring in for like 17 minutes a game and they drop 30 points. Like that's, that's Revolutionary Blackout Network. So go give them a sub. They're coming up on 13,000 subs right now. All the rest of these channels have quite a bit more subs than that. So these are like the juggernauts. All right. And uh, starting point guard is Kim Iverson. She has been the only reason that the Hill has been able to rebound. If you go and look at the Hill's uh, videos over the last three or four months, the only videos that get good ratios and have a lot of people watching are Kim Iverson. And particularly, if you noticed, when she goes in there and embarrasses Ryan Grimm, which, by the way, Ryan, you're going to want to watch my roast later on today. I'm going to have to go after you for something you said on Rising. And thank God Kim was there to catch you. It was embarrassing for you, and um, as far as I know, that that video got a fair amount of views, like 1.1 million at this point. So it's so fun watching Kim Iverson go on there and just destroy Ryan Grimm, because that's all she does. So she's wonderful. Her show is great, but my favorite thing that she does is she goes out there and just like chops Ryan Grimm right in half, metaphorically. Every time they talk and they butt heads on something, Ryan Grimm starts to sweat, and you can see that new fake hair dye, like going down his forehead, down his brow, and then into his mouth. Like, he's just so afraid of her, you can tell, by the way, that, like, he, his mannerisms towards her. Because Ryan is a propagandist. Kim Iverson is not a propagandist. She brings receipts. So, Kim, starting point guard on my dream team here. Number four, shooting guard is Jimmy Dore. Jimmy's doing great work. His work has fallen off a little bit lately where I've disagreed with him a couple of times, but the numbers don't lie. And despite some things that I have disagreed with him on, he still puts out great content. And here, guys, let me let me let you guys understand something right up front. I don't turn on people who I believe are not, not ill-intentioned just because I disagree with them on something. I disagree with things uh, that Kim Iverson says, too. But I don't get the idea that any of these people I'm about to list right here are bought and paid for by the 
establishment. So I'm not going to turn on them. And I have been getting a lot of that lately since I got a little bit of notoriety. A lot of people are trying to get me to turn on the people that I've put in power rankings before for like one little teeny tiny thing. Guys, I'm not going to do that. I told you I don't go looking for trouble. If somebody says something really dumb and is putting out rank propaganda and I can prove it, I'm going to go after them and I'm never going to let them forget that. But I'm not just for, you know, one little dumb thing. I'm not going to like fan the flames of division between a lot of these channels because I disagree with almost all of these channels to one extent or another. So that doesn't to me warrant going after them. So even though I disagreed with Jimmy on a couple of things, he's still hot as hell. I mean, his numbers don't lie. He's growing and he is going to catch Kyle Kalinske here pretty soon. I mean, he's at like nine nine 915,000 right now. Kalinske's been sitting at 971, 972 for fucking, you know, a year. So eventually it's going to happen. It's going to be a little later than I originally suspected around New Year's. I, I think Jimmy will probably be around 930, 935 at that point, maybe a little higher than that. So he's not going to catch Kalinske. But within uh, the first month or two of the new year, he will pass Kyle Kalinske, no doubt about it. So uh, he's a starting shooting guard, Jimmy Dore. And uh, he just, you know, generally does good work. I mean, he just exposes CIA bullshit propaganda. He has m most of the gray zone guys on to explain that stuff, and that's always fun to watch. He'll talk to Glenn Greenwald and other people like that. It's just a good show. It just is. Uh, number three is Lee Camp. He does hilarious content. He's a little bit smaller than these other channels, but he always puts out great content and has been recently as well. Um, he's just a fun, fun watch, and he's one of those channels that I didn't really watch much of until I started Political Fight Club, and then you guys recommended him to me, and now I watch basically all of his content. He does Moment of Clarity and uh, Redacted Tonight, so go check him out. Lee's hilarious, and uh, he does great interviews. I think he did, uh, recently he did an interview with like, oh geez, who was it? Aaron Mate, I believe. I'd have to go back and look. Uh, it's, so he has great people on to talk to as well, and they always have a great time, and it's a great listen. So Lee is the starting small forward. And then number two is Russell Brand. Again, I've been getting into him a lot lately. He's kind of like me, where like his background is not in politics, but as he, because he's kind of an introspective guy and he's interested in like helping people, he like learns and he really listens to his subs and his numbers are off the charts. It wasn't recent, it was just recently that I had him at 4 million subs. He's now at 4.5. That was like six weeks ago. He's put on 500,000 subs in six weeks, and he's breathing down the neck of TYT right now, which to me is absolutely warranted, and he's going to pass them pretty soon too. So Russell, even though he doesn't really call himself political, he really is. He just doesn't label himself. He just kind of says what he wants about the establishment, and he does like a story or two a day. He makes it funny. He's probably one of the best satirists I've ever seen, like at least living satirists right now. And he's a comedian, so everything that he does is so listenable. So Russell, he is doing a great job. He's number two, our power forward. And uh, he will pass TYT sometime, around the same time probably, that Jimmy passes Kyle Kalinske. That will be a fun couple of weeks when those two pass those other two nards. So good job, Russell. His uh, show's on YouTube, and I think he's got another one on Luminary. And then number one, and this really isn't even close, this channel has been on fire lately is the gray zone. All of those boys have been on fire and, and Anya Parnpil as well. Um, but everybody at the gray zone is doing a great job, but I want to give special mention to Ben Norton, who has done a great job with the Nicaraguan elections and, you know, now the Honduras elections, all the elections in uh, Central and Latin America, they've been doing a great job on. And since there has been a fair amount of propaganda being put out by the U.S. government about all those elections being pantomime or sham elections, it's been very important for the Gray Zone to go out there and debunk that in real time. So he's done a great job. That's mostly what Ben Norton's been up to. But recently also Aaron Mate has got another nail in the coffin for Russiagate, which is hilarious to me, and the OPCW. So, I mean, they, I'm going to cover the OPCW thing and Russiagate, the uh, further evidence that we have now in different episodes. Don't you worry. But, like, Aaron Mate's just hitting dingers. Blumenthal's hitting dingers. Parham Pill's hitting dingers. Ben Norton's hitting grand slams left and right. So, I, the Gray Zone, we can't do without them. They are our center. They're like our 7'4 center who, like, can bring down the house with a dunk. 
we really need to make sure that they don't get censored. They're doing fantastic work. And you know they're in the sights of the establishment. They absolutely are. And they're on the bad boy algorithm, meaning the same one I'm on, the naughty boy algorithm, where they just they get stonewalled. They should have over a million subs, and I think they only have like under 200,000, which means they have about the same as like Jordan Sheridan from Status Quo. It's just like, how? How? Anyway, those guys are doing a great job. They are the first ballot Hall of Famer right now, our uh, seven foot four center, who we just can't do without the gray zone. So that's my power rankings for you guys, and I'll reread them. Uh, the uh, sixth man or our first overall draft pick rookie that's dropping 30 points a game at 17 minutes a game is the Revolutionary Blackout Network. Number five is Kim Iverson. Number four is Jimmy Dore. Number three is Russell Brand, or excuse me, uh, Lee Camp. Number two is Russell, Russell Brand, and number one is the Gray Zone. And that right now is, that's most of my diet. I, I listen to a couple other shows, of course, you know, a lot of people on the INN. Uh, Indie News Network, which I'm proud to be a part of. I watch a lot of their content as well, but they don't have quite the uh, subscribers that a lot of these juggernauts do. So go give them a sub. Let's give these guys a boost to make sure that they don't get smeared. There is something you've noticed here, guys, by the way. All of these people I just mentioned, also Glenn Greenwald, who I mentioned earlier, but I didn't rank, they have all been getting smeared relentlessly lately by the shit libs. Relentlessly. For every little teeny tiny thing, they get just torched by the neolibs but here's the thing the neolibs suck and they're all a bunch of fucking karens and they don't have any data on their side so when they try to go after people like greenwald and jimmy Dore and russell brand and the gray zone it just doesn't land they just can't they they hate what these really good channels are doing and how popular they are so they just smear so i will also talk about how uh I think it was David Dole and Owen Higgins got together to go after Glenn Greenwald. Oh, that probably went well. That's like when, uh, you know, a couple of the, like, weaker Avengers go up against Thanos. Are you out of your fucking mind? He's just going to grab you both by the necks, conk your heads together, and throw you away. Nobody does more shit liberty than David Dole and Owen Higgins. You out of your And David Dole actually calls Owen Higgins a journalist. Yeah, he's he's a journalist the way that, like, Luke Harding is a journalist. Not really. Anyway, we'll do the roast of uh, those two assholes later. I'll break down what Glenn was actually talking about. And kudos to all of these channels. They're, they always get smeared because the establishment realizes that they're both A, popular, and B, telling the truth about how shitty the establishment is. So they're going to take shit. Same as all the rest of us. So just be ready to take it. And you guys can go get fucked if you think I'm going to turn on some of the people that I know to be honest actors in this sphere. I'm not going to go after people for little teeny tiny things. I don't go looking for trouble. But if I know you're a dishonest actor, I will shred you. And you will see in part two of my roast later today or possibly tomorrow that I am not holding back at all. Trust me. Ryan Grimm, you might want to... Tune in for that, buddy. Keep fighting the good fight out there. I'll talk to you guys later.